welcome to Let's Play Dark Souls Part 40. Right here by our buddy Lamhall, or Zamhall, I always forget. Um, Hi, Shemai. I didn't expect to meet anybody here. I see, he's still just chilling here. Um, I'm here with 80,000 souls because now that we finished Artorius, figured off we should uh, get his armor, right? Uh, you can also get Ornstein's armor, but we, we want our, Artorius's armor. Let's go ahead and get that. We'll uh, complete the set. And then, uh, See if he has anything to say. Hmm. Well, I'm certain we will make a good trade eventually, so I am willing to share some tips. If you see kindling in the catacombs, use divine weapon. That will repel. Okay, so yeah, he's. Uh, not only did we already just make a sale, but uh, we already know about that. So, uh, thanks for trying, but uh, we're good. Thank you. That was a fine trade. I have this funny feeling we'll meet again soon, and we'll make another fine trade, of course. All right, so at least on the way out, he's acknowledging us. So we'll give him a we'll give him a bow for our business, since uh, it's probably the only thing I'm gonna buy off of him, to be honest. Uh, let's uh, let's try on that new armor, by the way. Uh, where is that? Somewhere around here. I got we we're in the late game. We got a lot of armor by now. Uh, see, Artorius definitely had a pretty pretty good sense of fashion here. Um, I think I passed over them. Hell's Guardian Stone, Gauntlet, Gauntlet, Gauntlet. Oh, oh Gauntlet's are I was looking for A, that's why. Uh, let's see here. Um, leggings of Artorius, there we go. And with that, uh, I guess I should take off the shield just to be extra thorough. Yeah, now, now we are, we are the man himself. We are rocking some big Artorius energy here. Um, I am going to keep the shield on though. Uh, ooh, I didn't check how much, if the armor is actually better or worse, though. So, do a quick uh, weight comparison after this. Let's get my Dragon Crest shield back on. And then, uh, currently... No, we are we are mid-rolling still. Um, ooh, I wonder if we still need our Havel's Ring, though. Do, but maybe not with the shield. No, we still... <laughs> okay. Uh, let's put our shield back on, and we will uh, keep Havel's Ring on as well. Uh, Wolf Ring is actually uh, very fitting now, part of the build. So that's cool. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll rock it like this this episode. Why not? Uh, yeah, it's so, so cool. I'm so, just so happy we have this sword, guys. Um, anyway, but without uh, rambling on here forever, uh, what are we going to be doing this episode, right? So we've actually done all the things we need to do. We can go fight the final boss within like five minutes right now if we wanted to. Uh, but there is still one more area for us to go to. Uh, now, this is a secret area, though. A uh, very notorious secret area. So I went ahead and rested at that bonfire. So it's going to take us here to Anorlando, which is uh, going to be where we want to take care of business today. So just enjoy the view while we're up here, as always. We're going to make our way down here. Uh, now, this place does have quite a few secrets. And um, some of them... We're not going to get into all the secrets of this place quite yet, but uh, we are going to get into some of them. So, uh, so we make our way down here. We need to get back to that spinny staircase, and we're going to use that to get to the first secret. So the gargoyle is not here anymore, fortunately, but no biggie. Now, I always forget exactly how we want to get here, but we want to make the staircase go down right now. Because, yeah, right now, as you can see, it links up to down there, which goes into the bottom part of that big cathedral, which um, we'll begin to that eventually, don't you worry. But first, let's see. Let's make your bets now if we're going to go up or down. Oh, look at that. I did it right. Awesome. Uh, so while that's going down, uh, we're actually going to get to the lower parts ourselves. And if we do that, all the way down. We can come over here. And we're actually going to find a bonfire. And I believe this is also a warpable bonfire at that. So let's go ahead and light it. And we are missing a little bit of health, so may as well rest. So right here, we're going to find ourselves the Ring of the Sun's Firstborn. And uh, that's a... That's a ring that will improve your miracles, and um, I'm not going to put it on, but I'm going to put on a ring we grabbed a, uh, a while ago. This dark room 
Dark Moon Seance Ring. So it has a, a pretty good effect of giving you more attunement slots, but there is a secondary effect where if you put it on right here, then this wall will mysteriously disappear. And up ahead, we're going to see a boss room. We're, we're not going to fight the boss today. In fact, we're not even going to fight it this playthrough. I'm going to save this boss for New Game Plus. Um, So, yeah, as you can see, um, if you come here with the ring, then you have the option to kneel here. Oh, disciple of the dark sun, thou hast journeyed far. Hear my voice. If thou shalt swear by the covenant to become a shadow of Father Gwyn and Sister Guinevere, a blade that shall hunt the foes of our lords, then I shall protect thee, safeguarding thy person with the power of the dark moon. And with that, we are going to join the Blades of the Dark Moon. And we get ourselves a Blue Eye Orb and a Covenant Ring. Very well. Now thou art a Blade of the Dark Moon, hunteth the enemies of the Lords by the power of the Dark Sun. And yeah, so just like all Covenants, we can collect items and then offer them for rewards. Um, but that's about it we can do for now. So, like I said, uh, we can actually go here. If we traverse the white light, then uh, we'll get to fight a boss. But um, I want to save that for the next playthrough, because like I said, next playthrough is going to be the sort of evil playthrough, which I think is a little more fitting. It's debatable if um, what I'm doing now is actually the evil thing. But um, when we're ready to cross that bridge, I think it'll make more sense why we're saving it for then. But... For now, just know we you can come here, get the Dark Moon Covenant, and um, yeah, the way this covenant works, it's pretty cool, is that you actually defend people that are getting invaded, right? So if you're if some innocent player is playing the game, right, some evil red spirit invades them, and then they're getting picked on, with our covenant, if someone's getting invaded, then uh, we come in to the rescue and help fight them. Um, now, that being said, that might actually be how it works in Dark Souls 3. Uh, I think in this game it's actually a little bit different, I just realized. Um, basically, so okay, this is a bit of a complicated process, but if you get invaded and you don't like the person that invaded you, like let's say they use some cheap tactics or they were just mean or something, you can do something called an indictment. And you can, indictments are one-time use items, so you buy them from uh, Oscar, the, the partner. Um, Actually, wait, is his name Oscar? I forget. Um, either, you know, the guy that showed us, well, what is it? Uh, you can buy them from him, and then during the invasion or afterwards, you can indict them. And then that makes the invader go on a special, like, bad, bad man list. And uh, that's where we come in, is that when we do our invasions, then uh, we invade players who got indicted. And it's basically a very sort of uh, loose form of justice, right? Because... Uh, as you can expect, not everyone is super uh, honorable with inviting. Ooh, we got the pain guardian sword. I don't know if we already got that yet, but basically the little knife weapon they use. Anyway, uh, but yeah, indictments, kind of like a way to stick it to someone if you're kind of salty about <laughs> getting invaded. But um, either way, I don't think we're going to use them too much. Uh, I might do some indictments once uh, in New Game Plus when we're doing multiplayer, but anyway, for now. We just, uh, why are we even here, right? Because um, we came here before, remember over there we picked up the Black Iron set, with Tarkus. Um, and we could have done this earlier, and in some ways we probably should have, uh, for reasons we'll get into, but I figured it's a secret, so we'll save it for the end. If you, if you remember way back when we returned to the Asylum, we went back to our cell, and we got a peculiar doll. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick, which I think it's at the bottom or somewhere around here. A lot of keys on here. Big keychain. Right here. Peculiar doll. Strange doll in a strange dress. There was once an abomination who had no place in this world. She clutched this doll tightly and eventually was drawn into a cold and lonely painted world. And, right, so a painted world. And here's a painting. Now, for those of you who played Super Mario 64, uh, this part will definitely ring a bell. I 
right, and now we are in the painted world of Ariamis. And uh, as you can see, it's we start with the view we had of the painting. And like I said, just like in Mario 64, you get sucked right in. Uh, that's also why at museums they say, please do not touch the painting because in case you have a doll on you, this will happen. Trust me, it's definitely real. Um, now, as far as what this place is, it's uh, there's definitely some interesting stuff here uh, to talk about, both from a uh, gameplay perspective and actual game development perspective too. So, first thing to get out of the way that I want to just mention as a game developer is that this level was actually the testing level that they used when they were making Dark Souls, which is uh, really cool. Um, which basically means that while they were programming just the foundation of the game in the early stages, you know, like getting the player to run, walk around the combat system, all that, they were using this map to run around in. And they figured we put all this effort into making it, so why not make it a secret area? So I like that a lot. It's a good use of time and effort that way. Whoever, someone had to go through the trouble of designing this. And uh, yeah, they, uh, their efforts still got in the game, which is cool. So um, as far as the where it fits into the world of Dark Souls, um, now, okay, if you had a bow and arrow or something, you could shoot this and get it, but we'll be able to get up there and knock it down. Uh, so we'll just do that when we get there. Uh, obviously by the fact that we're here, and I'm actually gonna quickly change to the spider shield, because we got some poison to deal with, but, um, in the land of Dark Souls, as you can tell, for some reason, it's possible to make magic paintings, which contain whole universes in them. So, now, there are some other painted worlds in the sequels, but in the main Dark Souls, this is the only one that we know of. And these are the poisonous guys. Oh, no, I was too slow. Okay, you know what? Um, I'll probably not bother with the shield then. Ah, okay. Quickly heal this before I die. No one else is coming, right? So, yeah. This painting world in particular was used by the gods as a uh, sort of dumping grounds, right? So anything, this is basically their closet of shame. Anything that the gods, and remember the gods being the giants that rule in Orlando under Gwyn, anything they didn't like, they would just toss into here as like a dumping ground, which is uh, gonna have some consequences for them. So, actually, you know what? Why not? Let's, let's check out what's down here. Oh, just stairs. Cool. Oh, wait, we can go down more. Uh, oh, hello. Some white rats. Everything is. Adjusted for the snow, of course. Oh, up to get ourselves another solar brave warrior. So um, yeah, anything in here was basically condemned by the gods as useless. We don't want to deal with it. It could be a threat to us, or it's something we're just ashamed of. <laughs> so for now, you know, there's we're just seeing some hollows. Nothing special yet, but as we uh, collect some items, things will make more sense. And, oh yeah, watch out for the ambush there. They come up on you. Uh, I don't want to drop down there quite yet. Now, these guys are going to be a pain because I do not have enough range. Let's see, maybe if I'm just at the edge. Okay, yeah, I have to be careful though. As you can see, they can shoot fireballs, which I'm not a fan of. In fact, you know, let's take this guy out first. And we back up. And slash him. No! <laughs> Alright, I only have one more of these, so I gotta be careful. Oh no, and there's two more guys, of course. I should probably use my pyromancy. Okay. Oh, I like that idea. So what this does it. Oh yeah, vaporizes them. If you, uh. Oh, I got both of them. Very nice. Um. If you manage to kill them with a fire weapon, by the way, I don't think that they'll do the poison stuff either, so... Definitely another reason to use the fire sword or something like that. Uh, now let's see, is there anything else up here? Uh, remember, like, this, this whole area is a secret, so that we don't really have a real objective we care about too much. We're sort of... there is a boss for us to fight, so, uh, and of course, some cool items to grab. Uh, I don't think there was anything else. Oh, there was more stuff up there, of course. Uh, OK. 
I have, to, I have to jump again. No biggie. We're, we're artorias. We can do flips and stuff. Yeah. Ooh, there is a ladder there. No, there is. Oh, so if we had used the soul of artorias, let me get an egg refuge. Um, if we had used the soul of artorias to make another sword, we actually could have had a version that does <laughs> let us do flips and stuff. So like I said, we wanted to be nice this playthrough, so we gave it to Siren in instead. But we'll uh, we'll play around with that at the end of game plus for sure. So coming down here, hear a lot of grunts and more rats down here. Take that. And I don't know if this is a mimic. It is not. I'm glad. Oh god, hello. Yeah, they could have definitely gone overboard with mimics. Uh, we'll get the painting guardian set, of course. That, and I just realized that since the spider shield doesn't actually help us, may as well go back to dragon. This is my favorite shield in the game. I wish uh, it wasn't just black right now. Lighting isn't always the best, guys. <laughs> I believe we can drop down from here somewhere else, but we went the normal way. Went down the ladder, saved ourselves some fall damage. Uh, we are going to have to be human at some point, but because uh, there is an invasion here as well. It's a whole bunch of laundry list items at <laughs> this place. But uh, we're going to do what we can as we sort of progress through and try to make it a good time as well. Recording a big batch of episodes today because um, I'm actually going to be out of town for the rest of the week after this. So i got to do a little bit of prep work. Going somewhere nice and warm. Gonna be going to Florida. It's gonna be very nice. Escape some of this winter cold. It's been very awful where I live. Just snowing multiple times per week. Um, so over there, I don't want to go over there quite yet because there's a shortcut I can open first, which I'd rather do before I mess with what's over there. Let's see. Yep. Here's the stairs. And oh yeah, so here's uh, these guys. See if we get a nice plunging attack. Oh yeah. I feel like this sword is extra good with plunging attacks. I don't know if that's just me. Um okay, if we go out this way. Yeah, this is gonna take us to the center courtyard. And okay. What we're looking at is uh known as the phalanx. Um and oh yeah, okay, that works. So the phalanx is actually a real military tactic used in ancient times, which is kind of what they're doing here, where you form a group of um, soldiers, everyone's got a sword, I mean a spear and a shield, and you basically cover your buddy next to you, that way uh, you form this big porcupine kind of thing. Your spears all stick out and you got shields covering you all, but thankfully back in the day they didn't have to deal with Artorias's. Because if they did, it would have gone like that. <laughs> so I believe now we can open it from this side, yes. And this will actually take us back to the start. Um, so yeah, now that we've opened up the level a bit, let's go ahead. Um, you know what, I'm just gonna turn human now because we'll get the invasion out of the way, why not? Come down here. following. Now this is a pretty cool invasion, I have to say. Um, he's a very unique looking character, probably the most unique armor in the game for sure. And uh, it'll become immediately clear why I'm saying that once we actually see him. After I take out these chumps of course. So anyway, uh, the phalanx does respawn, um, I should mention. And that's actually good because Apparently, and I've never actually tried this, but this is apparently one of the better spots to farm in the game for just souls. And you gotta be careful though, because if they're all being pretty cooperative and nice right now, but they can actually throw their spears, which I'll demonstrate for me. That guy, yeah, he went for it, see. And uh, yeah, if you rush him down like this, you can take him out pretty quickly and safely, but. If, uh, if you're not quick for killing them, and then they manage to spread out, then uh, you can just get barraged by <laughs> a large volley. And uh, 
that's going to be tough to survive. Thankfully, though, they're just kind of staying still and then you smack them, so. This is also actually, uh, so like I was saying, if you come here with, uh, actually, this pyromancy that we have here, and I probably should have tried it out, actually. I think it's better with the chaos version, but you'd basically just run up on them, cast this, which, to quickly demonstrate, would be kind of like a thing like this. Uh, you know what, actually, I don't know why, I, I had this pyromancy equipped, so let's, let's actually do it, let's see. And let's also, for, uh, added bonus, oh, wow, let's see, I always forget to fix my rings. Let's put our silver serpent ring on here, and see how many souls we get. So, again, you can come down here, and make your way up. Uh, ooh, gotta take these guys first. Heal up, and ooh, I might want to kindle the bonfire, actually. Yeah, we'll do it after. after we do the invasion, how about that? Because I'm sure he'll do some damage on me. So if we just run up on him, cast this. Oh, yeah. Easy short work. Um, although that only killed about half of them. A little disappointing, actually. And that'd be a one-shot. But as you can tell, uh, it's so, we don't get the most souls, right? That was about 10,000. But the, uh, the advantage comes from... Uh, we can just immediately run back to the bonfire, Whoa. and then uh, just get as many souls as we want. Whoa. So yeah, I hope uh, watching me kill these guys three times was at least kind of entertaining. But um, anyway, let's go over here now. Uh, again, let's just take in this wonderful, beautiful imagery. Let's take out these guys who, like, remember, you gotta be careful because they catch you with their charging attack. Very much not a good time. And there it is. Ooh, yeah, that one right there. Some weird sounds if you listen carefully. I don't know exactly what it is. There's, of course, the crow is calling, but... I don't know exactly where the trigger for the invasion is. Probably down here. But we are definitely human. So it should be soon. Just a few proud knights there. I'm telling you, he's around here. So there he is, King Jeremiah. So over there, we can see our Brainiac. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, so that is his helmet that he's using there. Uh, it's, and he is a pyromancer, which is very cool, in my opinion. Chaos Pyromancer at that. But yeah, we're gonna try to not let him get off his Chaos Storms, because those are pain to deal with. Yeah, actually, once he kills the distance, he's so good. Probably should have fought him with Pyromancy, but we're, we're Artorias today. Um, get a lot of souls for that. Pick up some humanity. Oh, and uh, very nice. Perfect. I'll use that to kindle. So I don't think there's anything else here. Uh, Oh, yeah, he does drop more stuff. Oh, yeah, he has the notched whip, which is cool. Uh, that's It's like the normal whip, except it's got, like, spikes, which means it does bonus damage against uh, exposed flesh, which is, like, there's a few enemies that that counts towards, but in PvP, that would only work if, uh, if they're not wearing any armor, which, I mean, to be fair, there's actually a lot of lunatics that run around naked <laughs> in PvP, so... May not be a bad idea to use it. Anyway, let's kindle this bonfire and let's call it an episode. We still have a lot more to explore in here. Not more to do, but we'll get to that in the next episode. So, um, let's hang out with our crow buddy here. Which, uh, well, that's another thing. Crows are uh, associated with the goddess of Velka. And there's a lot of Velka references in this place. Um, they say that Velka is, uh, like the anti god, right? She's. She exists to punish the other gods for their sins, which is really cool. And there's this kind of overarching theory that she's tied in with our own journey since we end up killing all the gods. If you remember, it was a crow that brought us from the asylum to Lordran. So a little bit of food for thought between episodes for you guys. But anyway, let's uh, let's wrap it up. You guys know the drill. I had fun making it. Hope you guys had fun watching it. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. So uh, farewell. <laughs>